Hello everybody, it's Angela here. Welcome back to the channel. Um, do want to give a special warm welcome to all my new subscribers. Um, thank you so much for um, choosing to watch my videos. I'll take that as an honour. Um, and to all my existing um, long-standing supporters, um, a very special welcome to you as well. I couldn't have done this without you. Um, it's a beautiful sunny day outside the window here. Um, not a breeze, clear blue skies, this lovely winter day. So it's looking fantastic. Perfect day to do a video. What I've decided to do today is um, something a bit different. So I'm not on the recycling um, lane at the moment. I am working on a couple of little envelopes that I've made. Um, as I always say to you, I'm sure this is not something unique to me. This is just my take on how to make them. So really, if I take it, it's, it's using scraps again from my um, scrap pile, um, decorating or embellishing the top. Um, it's just a little envelope um, that I make here. Um, and often that's able to be used in your journal in the following way. So what have I done with my book page? So if we had to put that on our book page like that, um, we would be able to glue that down on three sides um, and you can even use that for a little bit of a pocket for a tag or some other pieces of ephemera that you have. So that looks really cute. Um, or you could put two of those on a page, for example, like that. Um, that would work as well. So that's another idea. Um, you might want to just stick down those two sides there with glue on the edge. Um, and then again, use that as a tuck spot and tuck a couple of things in there. And you've got those sides open. So you do have a lot of options or just stick it down and like that on its own, um, all, all sides, and just use it that way. So, or even that way, or that way. <laughs> You know it's endless so there we go that's what we're going to have a look at today so grab up your goodies um, or your cup of coffee or tea and come and join me as i'll show you quickly how i go about making these right just a little um suggestion make sure uh that you've got, use your scraps. That's really what I wanted to say. Use up your scraps wherever possible. Don't go cutting into new sheets if you can help it, unless you're looking for a specific theme. I mean, I do that sometimes. But uh, really, January is my clear out month. So I really am either recycling or using up what's lying about because I just want to start off afresh when I do my next project. So I go and I make quite a few of these at once. Then I've got them on hand um, for when I want to use them with different colours um, and, and that's the way it works. So you can use and do pretty much anything here. I have cut out two so far, so I'm going to make one with a bit of a mauve um, colour palette. And then this is another scrap, I think this is antique papery. I think if you ask me, this is from my porch prints. So that's those two. Um, and I have just grabbed another scrap here. This is from my antique papery. And I thought I'd do a bit of a blue theme. Um, so I quite fancy that bit over there. Um, so I'm going to use this and show you how I measure that up. So let's just put those aside. Um, I do use my craft knife and ruler. You can, with pleasure, use your um, paper trimmer if that's what suits you. So the way I start off with it really is to see which bit I want for the flap or maybe for the bottom. So I'm going to start off looking at the flap bit because this is the, the right way up for the paper. And really it's four inches or 10 centimeters is what I work with. Now you can um, use different lengths, measures. I mean, these things are all personal. So do whatever suits you for your needs. So, sorry everybody, welcome back. I had um, someone at the door and then I got totally distracted. So half the day is gone already, but we're going to carry on with where we were. So I said to you, we would have about four inches across this way. So that means that we're looking at about 10 centimeters here. But as I said, whatever suits your purpose. Um, 
and that could many, be many things. So I'm going to just line up my sheet over here um, and match it up with my um, mat and hopefully that is where I want to be. <laughs> right. As I said, um, I really like that piece at the top there. So uh, the measurement, as I said, would be about 22 centimeters for my purpose today. So I'm going to just take my um, pencil, line it up with the board. That's about right. And on the side there. And then I can just chop it off. So there we go. Like that. Right, and then all that leaves to be done is this piece over here. So hopefully that's going to work. <laughs> right. So that's what it looks like. And then if to just to take one of these, I folded the top bit about just two and a quarter inches and the bottom is about just short of three but again i want that piece on the top so i'm going to do that about two and a bit like that just i'm just eyeing it up and um guesstimating that's the word i'm thinking of guesstimating where's the bone folder sorry so there we go i think that's how i want it there i like that bit there it looks pretty and then of course folding in the bottom bit so not too near the top um otherwise we won't be able to get in anything very easily so that's about how i would do it now i don't want that to be upside down so when you've got that situation there the best way to do it is for me because I do stitch around it I cut that bit off I cut it right off so we cut that off there on the fold then I can turn it the right way and nobody will be the wiser yeah there we go that will look perfect so I'll just clip that together with my peg so I know that's what I want there so there we've got three of those cut out so let's put that to the side all right, so that's what we're going to do now. So what I would suggest, um, looking at what we've got to do there, um, is I usually stitch around these. So let's do that quickly. Um, and then we'll know that that's all sorted. So it's just for me, I'm just using some mustard thread and I'm going to do straight stitching. So... scissors okay so um, I do the stitching across there first and then I'm able to line that up because you can't stitch through there and then start over here and go right around so that's really how I do it um, so let's start there bit of a zigzag sorry in the middle there we go I was looking at the sewing machine thinking why is the needle in the wrong position Don't go too close to the corner because we're going to round them off. There we go. Oops, and at the bottom. Yeah, 
here we go jobs are done jobs are good and all done all right so now we've got that stitched over there we'll get to dealing with that in a minute and we've got the little bit at the top done so i'm going to get on with these other two here um and then i will be right back that on the side there we go oh sorry a little bit of a zigzag the corner right let's trim off these threads So that's number two and then the very last one zigzag okay so there we have we've got a nice one with a bit of peach and greens um, one with a little bit of blue and one with a little bit of the mauve so those are quite sweet really okay now to carry on with what we're doing the next step to that I would follow is I just need to grab my um, distress ink I just want to age up the middle bit so we're going to open up here use one of these lovely makeup brushes um, for those of you who aren't sure uh, who, who are new to journaling um, this seems to give a much more even tone I really like it I'm just going around the edges um, and as you can see that just takes away that stark white look which we don't really like so there that's that one um, and then the same with this there we go that one and of course the last one Okay, so that's how we deal with that. <laughs> right, so the next thing I like to do is to 
put on a bit of a decoration on here. So I've got different ways of doing that. I can just grab these here quickly and show you. So what you could do is you could take your serviettes. So these are the really little ones. Uh, I take white ones. I don't usually use white ones. These you can see ever so lightly. You could use your distress ink. I've actually dipped these in avocado water, excuse me, that I boiled up. Um, and that gave it a lovely blush color. You can see it's just not stark white. Um, here I've cut one of these in half. I think they're two here. Yeah. All right, so we have a half, half of one and I'm gonna stick that over there like that. So you can see it's just the right size. I think these are four inches across. And then with what the other thing you could do is, so it's a case of, oh, this is more peachy, so I prefer that one, I'm gonna stick that one there. Um, and then the other thing you can do is, I do have a die cut that cuts out these doily shapes. Don't ask me where I got this from because I bought it secondhand off eBay probably eight years ago. I have no idea, but I'm sure if you looked for a die cut for doilies, you would find loads. So this is another thing, and I've just used scraps of paper, really. I think this is um, old scrap of paper from a very long time ago. And then it's a case of cutting them in half. So there we go. I've got one I've cut in half, um, and that I'm going to use for the blue one because I thought that looked so pretty just like that okay so you can do that um this mauve one here hmm i wonder should i change that to there no i'm gonna leave that there and we might have to have um one that i'm gonna use a little bit of this on so Let's do a bit of that. Just take a little bit of that white, stock white away. So just use a bit of the Distress ink, any color you have that you would normally use. Um, I don't have any uh, mauves, so that's what it's gonna be. So there we go, so that's the three we'll use. Let's give you some ideas. Obviously you could use anything that you have. Um, it makes no difference if you've got the Tim Holtz die cuts, so for example, something like that, then that would work as well. I don't know why I'm yawning today. It must be late. I've had a hard week. <laughs> I suppose you could use a piece of that as well. I've got other ones that would suit, look better, but whatever you've got that would be suitable would be great. So we're going to stick that down on the top. So where is my glue? Oh, there it is. Hang on a minute, sorry. Let's walk to the table. Right, so I'm going to use three in one. Um, that's my glue of choice. And I'm going to clean it a bit there. And then all I'm going to do is on the back of the doily, I'm just putting a little bit of glue. Make sure you put a good bead across the top. Um, and then I'm just dobbing it on more solid areas and then of course the bit that goes just around the front like that and I want to place it um, just at the top sort of gauging the center and I am just going to smooth that over without breaking the doily <laughs> there we go that's better right so there we go we've got it sorted Hope you can see that. So that's looking pretty already. Then we're going to do the same with this one. You can distress the edges. Um, I'm going to just put a little bit on the solid bits, bead on the top, and then very lightly, of course, not too thick on these bits as well. And then we can put that line that up centrally over there there we go so that's looking really nice as well okay so there we go and then the last one at the bottom will be this one um, if I'd cut out something in uh, with a newspaper print or, or book pages that would have 
look nice as well but I haven't so that's a pity but you know you've got to use what you've got because I'm trying as I said I'm trying to cut back on the scraps because it's an ever increasing mountain <laughs> which I'm sure you can all relate to so we're just going to gently rub that down and there we go that's the last one there so we've got those three sorted like that now what you can do it's up to you is a bit of collage here I've grabbed a couple of just um, this kind of a thing that I've, I've just put bits and pieces on here so that's up to you it depends on on what you have below now um what i'll do i thought i'd just do a bit of a central piece so oops my foot was stuck um on this one i thought i would put a little bit of a the scrap that i had um right so i want my tear ruler my old tatty tear ruler People have asked me about the tear ruler. Um, you can get something similar in metal if you put metal tear ruler into Amazon, for example. So let's um, turn this around. Uh, and see how we go here. Right, so I don't want... That's a bit uneven. Let's just do it this side then. much do I need uh, yeah not too much I'm not too happy about this side let's try for and see if I can make this a bit better this will be tricky because it's quite close but we don't need a huge piece, so I've just got to persevere. I think that's better. Right. What I'll do is I'll just um, cut that off there. Um, make a little mark of how long it needs to be. Like that. Cut that off. Right. Lots of bits and pieces here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is... Sorry, my other um, gl uh, glue, what's, gosh, I've got it all wrong today. <laughs> my Toffee Crunch um, Distress Ink. This one's ever so slightly darker. Just gives me a little bit more of what I want over there to seal that off. And I'm going to stick that down there like that. So let's just put that over there. There you go. And of course you can add, like I said, you can add any other little bits of collaging. Um, whatever you fancy. So if you want to put a bit of text down. So let's let's do that. If I want to put, um, I've got a bit of Edith Holden here. And I think I will just tear off a little bit of text. There we go, like that, and I've got a little bit of a green scrap and there's some lovely sage coloured greens in there, so if I just, you know, tear off a bit, and then we can, I don't know, just, I just play around, to be honest, that's what I do, I just play around and see what happens. And that's the best way to do it. Whatever you suddenly look at it and you think that's where I'm putting it and that's where it is going. So there we go. So I'm going to stick that one down right there. And I just made that all up. <laughs> As you do. Right, so we stick that over there like that. Quite like that there. And I'm going to very lightly just give it a bit of a finishing off I love this Eden Edith Holden uh, script it's really lovely she had a lovely handwriting isn't she we're going to stick this one I think a little bit further over because I'm going to have this other bit coming down the middle here so this one let's hope it's going to stick so I'll just better 
re um, touch this one up with a bit of glue make sure you go to the edges um, and then we are just going to hopefully I'm gauging this well remove it over a little bit and there we go how's that pretty really pretty I like that okay can you see that yeah yeah so that one is pretty much done now you can take your dabber thing and you can go around there because we've stitched it um, just like that and on this side just a little bit and that just gives it a nice bit of a finish so that bit's all all of this is you know whatever is your style so whatever is appealing to you as I said use what you have in the scrap pile it's an ever climbing mountain for me so just want to get rid of all of that so there we are so far right so let's finish off this one before I go on to the next one oh I've got this thread that's following me around gone okay so that's where we are there um next one so here's the blue one uh we have stuck that down um, we're going to do a little bit of decoration here we've got far less sort of of these turquoise aqua colors there so again i'm going to use something that's a bit of a scrap i like this i think i don't know where i've got this from all over the place <laughs> i've had so many different kits i've been working on i can't even remember so there we go you know and i'm so sad i won't even throw that away um because i never know when i'm going to use that and i do use it <laughs> that's a shocking bit right so line that up get an idea of where you need to be all right like that i will stop using my embroidery scissors so you'll just have to look at my arm um i'm gonna cut that off there and just gauge it again mm, I quite like that so we'll use the dopper again and just get it all sorted like that and then looking again at some of my other scraps hmm I'm gonna just turn my fingers a little bit of a another bit off there that goes nicely with that and if I put that bit down there and um, hmm, what shall I put over there I don't think oh yeah and probably let me see if I've got a bird I've got a little bird he's got a bit of blue I think we're gonna have a little bird on that one so that'll look quite sweet and then I'm not sure if it's that side or that side I think that side um, and then again I'll put a little bit of this um, text from Edith Holden so let's just see how I want this to pan out Yeah, I want some over there because there is text there or do I just want to swap it around you know mm. I think that's how I'm gonna have it like that I think that's all right right so this one second that one first zoom around with the uh, distress ink a little bit I don't know it just sort of seals it doesn't it and then um, a bit of glue I hope you've all had a wonderful weekend um, it's drawing to an end for me now so 
um, trying to get everything done as you do on a Sunday night. Um, so, and there's the dog <laughs> giving me her signal that she wants to come in, but that's not going to happen now. She'll have to just hang in there a bit. My dog is very um, much linked to me <laughs> as opposed to anybody else in the house. If you have that with your animals, they really hone to one person more than anyone else. And that person is me. Probably because I'm the feeder, but I don't know if that is the case or what, really. Um, maybe you guys can tell me. But she definitely hangs around me. <laughs> Oops, there we go. Get the beak. Okay. Well, ladies, I must tell you, I have not been behaving on my diet. If I'm honest, I've been pretty naughty. Um, and yes, uh, Gina, after you showed me the picture of the caramel cake, I did go and get another caramel cake and well there you go <laughs> so yes not good right I think I'm happy with that we've got one more to catch up on so let's just put those over there for a minute and think what are we going to do with this one so again I like the bit of a strip it sort of brings out a few shades I'm messing about here again. I'm going to take a piece of text. Um, I think this one I'm going to do this way. I'm going to cut it off there so it's flush with the bottom. I think I'm going to put that over there like that. Yeah, and then I've got this piece of scrap paper. And I think I will not do a central bit. I think I'm going to think, think, think. I'm going to cut across here like that, just to make it. And then I'm going to, again, just tear off a piece. And I'm going to put it over here. Oh, maybe I'm not. I don't know. Let's see. I quite like that. I might move it. Well, no, I would have to do that if I wasn't going to move it. And no, uh, I think it's going to be where it was. Right, so that's going to go there. And that's going to go there. And that's all right. I'll, I'll deal with that. That's I'm happy with that. So let's just do this quickly. And a little bit of this. Just to seal it off sort of finishes the edges doesn't it so we want this down first and there we have it on the edge stay um, and then this bit as well and the good thing about using this glue you know it is there for a very long time you can count on that so we'll just put that over there of course if you wanted to do all your decorating first and then sticks around probably a good idea because you would then sew over that and give it a little bit more reinforcement but as I said using this three-in-one glue you have no worries in that department so you're not going to quite see that bit over there I could um, I suppose put a little bit more right, let's, let's try that so if I go to the bottom here um, no I can do that over there and then what I'll do is I'll just tear a piece across like that um, and just put it on the edge like that I think that will just sort of bring through that lovely color okay Gosh, it's looking messy here. Right, so if I don't see it now, at least it's there. And when I open it up, then it is there as well. So I quite like that one. So there's some ideas 
Right, let's put that aside. Let's just clear the decks here a little bit. Oops. You can always ink the corners afterwards. That's my sort of call on that. So move that over. We are done with the sewing machine. We can throw all these bits on my scrap pile over there. Um, right, so now what we want to do now is do a, a couple of decorations on the top here. So um, like I've done with this one over here, I sort of layering it up a bit. Um, so what I, I do now is I have another die cut, which I bought for pound fifty, I think, a long time ago. I don't know where I got it. It was a cheapie on, on eBay. And a lot of my scraps I cut out uh, with these die cuts. If you've got a punch, a flower punch, whatever you've got, have a look at it. Um, and here's a whole lot of the scraps and I cut them out into flowers like that. So I hope you can see all of that. Um, there we go. So what I want to do now is, is take a couple of these. So I usually think, right, there's this one here, or I could use the lighter ones for the bottom. So I'd, I'd take some of those. Um, that that would probably work better there. That might work better there. That's blue, but we could use that side. So I want two of the I want two of the bigger flower, so I can layer them up like that. Uh, and because I'm going to use one like that, I'm going to put the blue one on the top, and then we can always put one like that. That could work. Um, I might find something else instead of that one. So let's just have a look through what I have here. Oh, that one's quite nice. That's a music one. So we'll have that one for there. I've got a bit of a mauve one, which could work really nicely here. Um, and then what I need is a bit of a peachy one over there. So I'm not going to use that one. We could use this for the bigger one. Oh, well, let's see, I could use that for the bigger one and then change this one for something slightly different. So let's try that. Mm, I'm not loving it. What else can I put in there? That's a bit dark. I'm going to probably end up with <laughs> one of these again, which is fine. That'll work. So let's do that. Mm, not ideal, but you know, oh, I quite like that one. So let's do that. There we go. So I've got three there. I've got pretty much three there, but I'm going to change the last one for that. And I just, oh, I've got three there. So there we go. So there we go. We've got those. Sorry, that took a bit of a while. Um, there's one that I've punched out with a paper punch. And those are also pretty. So whatever you have, you know, have a look and see what you've got. And as I always suggest, cut up the scraps, you know, cut them up. Um, you have in front of the TV or if you've got a punch or something and just take a good hour and cut out these things. And then you've always got them on hand. So that's handy. Right. So what we want to do now is um, I'm going to find a, a butterfly um, like I have there because that's going to go on top. So what I've got a couple of blue ones over here and I think I quite like that. Mm -hmm. I could put that one on. That's between that one or that one. I think that one's beautiful. So we'll do with that one. Oh, that one's also pretty, but a bit small. If I had a bigger one of those, do I? No. So that will be what we have there. And then I need a peach one for over here. So I pulled out a few pink ones. Could have that one. I think I quite like that one. Yeah, so that's that. And then over here, hmm, I need to find something to go on there. So that would be <clears throat> looking in my... Oh, I tell you what, you don't have to have a butterfly. Should we find a bit of a flower or something to go on that one? 
oh look here i've got a bit of a cluster again making things up with bits and pieces i could actually put that on the top so let's do that because it's the right color so what i'm going to do is i'll start with this one um i'm going to open up my distress ink and just quickly give that a bit of a touching up there and then there as well sorry that you have to watch me ink yeah and then this one is all right I'm not, oh, we'll do that one just quickly like that um i'm just bending these up a bit like that give it a bit of a dimension not so flat yeah you can even roll them up if you want but this is quicker so just bend over the tops like that um, and because that's pink I'm gonna put this one hmm how am I gonna do it I'm gonna put the three like that um, yeah I quite like that and I'm gonna stick that down there so back with the glue let's join these all up first so hopefully you can see this we put a bit of a dab of glue in the middle I'm then going to I'm just moving those so that you can see the petals in between like that yeah I think that's that's about it and then a bit of glue on this one like that um, I'm just all mixing up into um, sorry matching up into the gaps once you've got it you can then see where the exact middle is like that so we will end up sticking that over there so just let's let that dry for a minute let's do this one same story so let's just quickly bend this up um, Okay, so let's twist this up like that. Oh, I can hear Paige is taking the dog now, so that's good. Just scraping the door, wants to come in. Wants to be with its mummy. <laughs> so, I'm horrible. <laughs> no, I'm not really. But, you know, she missed the boat, so now she has to wait outside till the video is finished. Oh, can't just let her in. Right, sorry ladies. <laughs> um... There we go. And again, a little bit in the middle. And as you can see, I am just matching these petals where the gaps are. So there we go. I think that's about it. I'm just gauging here. Okay, we'll go on to the next one now. Oh, come on. Right, so again. like that bend it up just the end like that would you know right one two three four five oh glue's doing the oozy thing match it up with the end of alternating bitties there like that and then again one two three four five okay right and then again just like that right i quite like that that's looking good right so we'll leave that to dry this one's dry now so we can come back to this one just put it up a bit there um, and then what I've done is I'm just going to give this a bit of a trim because I'm not quite liking the uh, squared off corners um, and that looks just a bit better so I've made a little bit of a cluster there with a bit of lace some other bits of lace um, some cheesecloth a little flower and I've sewn a button on so there we go that's what I've done there you can see that all right so now I'm just going to take this 
and stick it over there. Now I didn't even need the middle flower, did I? But there we go. It just makes it look like a bit of a bigger cluster. Um, um, it's just an alternative to the butterfly. So, you know, again, we're just working on scraps of fabric and everything. So let's just stick that in the middle like that. There we go. We've got a lovely cluster there now. I think that looks really lovely. Yeah, hope you can see that. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just putting glue on the back here. Like that. Um, and then I'm going to stick that directly in the middle here. Now, when you're placing this, just make sure not to go too close there um, to the edge or too close here because this does need to open when it's in your journal um, on the page, the journal page itself. So just give that a nice press and then don't be afraid to just lift the petals a bit. It just gives it a little bit more dimension. Look how pretty that is. All right, so rather than just flat. So I quite like that. Okay, so there we've got a little envelope um, made. And now you can just stick something in there um, any which way you feel is best on the page, however you're going to use it. Oh, what I did forget to do was uh, around the corners. So without um, trying to grab my, sorry ladies, trying to very gingerly, I've got my tripod in the way of the drawer. There we go. So that's the last thing that we want to do is we want to round the corners like that. All right. So now all that remains to be done, and I won't do this on every single one, drive you balmy, um, is just ink this up a little bit. Because it's so pale, it will make, just finish it off. Yeah. Um, and do the same around these corners as well. Okay, so there you have our first little envelope. How cute is that? Hmm? Right, so I'll put that one aside. Let's quickly finish off these. This one I'm going to use a butterfly. So what I'll do is I would just like to edge the butterflies as well it finishes it off and covers up any of the white when you're fussy cutting so there's another tip um, we're going to stick that on in the middle so let's put that on like that yeah um, we will then plonk that in the middle yes plonk <laughs> um, and then again just turn up the little petals as you go it just gives it a bit of dimension i'm going to stick this down first um so let's do that quickly gosh there's people walking around if you can hear that oh let's just make sure that is the middle i'm not too far to the close to the top then i can turn up my petals as well so that just gives it that and then what i want to do there is um, just put a little bit of a um, decoration in the middle. So I've got these little pearl flowers. Um, and they can just go there. A bit of glue again. Um, and that will dry nicely. But how does it, how, how finished does, does it look? How nicely do, is that finished off then? All right, so hopefully you can see that. I think that looks so sweet. And again, um, keep the petals lifted up. It just gives it a little bit of a dimension, which is really lovely. Okay, so there we've got number two done. Um, and then we've got the very last one. Um, that's dried nicely. So again, I like to just um, do the edges blocks off the white bits that might be showing so there we go we won't need that again now um, what you could do is just trying to give you different ideas okay so we're going to stick that again in the middle like that um, and what you could do here is um, you could put a button on there so 
let's see let's do that um so i've got a, a whole thing of these beautiful mother of pearl buttons and all i'm going to do is i like to put a button on that has been as is not you know with stitching gosh i can't talk today i don't know what's wrong with me my words all over the place so what we can do is just to stitch it through and of course the needle is has unthreaded itself or the users unthreaded the needle and I don't have my glasses on so this is potluck <laughs> um, hopefully this is not going to work no it's not going to work so let's just try again gosh there we go and that was a miracle ladies that was a miracle um, right, I can't see now what I'm doing. Right, so just do a few stitches through there. I think it does look, to me, it looks nicer. It looks more finished. Um, and then just turn that over. And you can make a bit of a knot. Um, so just thread it through without sewing yourself. <laughs> like that. Right. And then you can cut that off. Off. So let's do that. All right, so we've got a nice stitch button there now. And then I'm going to put the button. Oh, let's do this bit first. So again, give that a good glue coating of glue. Like that. And we want to centralize that again, not too far up. All right. Just like that and then I'm going to take our button and put that in the middle I really could do with it I had crafting tweezers I don't know I think my son's walked off with them along with my cricket which he's using isn't this a travesty my son has taken my lovely Cricut die cut machine um, to cut out labels for his channel. <laughs> and so I've had to say goodbye to that. So I wasn't very happy. But there we go. We have another example using a button. So that's also lovely. Now you can add words to it. So for example, um, let's see. Uh, me with my stamping so i collect the scraps of paper as i said to you from my trimming of the pages when i'm making journals um, and i stamp on the edges so with my stamp set a little in letter stamps so i'll make up the words they will click so nicely together so here we've got a bird so i thought i'd use nest um, i like to just ink the edge this is like a, an American typewriter font. Um, so that's really nice. You can um, take in my little scrap pile here again. It's all about scraps today. A uh, tiny piece of um, <laughs> cheesecloth that I've managed to pull apart without my glasses. So this is this is looking impressive today for me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing things I don't normally do without glasses, so that's quite amazing. I'll have a look at it afterwards and see if it looks all right, to be honest, because who knows? Who knows what it looks like? What it looks like to me at the moment is all right, but who knows what it looks like? <laughs> uh, I don't know what I was thinking, not wearing the glasses, but anyway, here we go. So we just put this on the bit of glue on the back stick on the uh, cheesecloth like that um, and uh, put some more glue down not the whole bottle Angela right cut off the and then I think I'm gonna just should I put it there should I put it there there i think yeah i think i'm gonna put it here like that there we go so you can add words as well so that gives you another idea the possibilities they are endless 
All right, so that's what we done, we've done today. So all that remains to do is, all that remains to be done, I should say, is do the edges and then ink if you want to ink. You can ink. I think the edging just finishes that off. Right, so I've got another three little envelopes here. Isn't that cute? So I love those colors. Again, beautiful pastel shades. There we go. So we've got our one with a flower and the modes. We've got one with a butterfly and a pearl embellishment. And then we've got the one with the button in the middle of the butterfly, which I think I really love. Um, and using some words um, and some cheesecloth. So there we go. And then of course the other ones that I made earlier. So I've got quite a few. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this today. If you have, please leave a like or a comment. I love hearing from you all. I will say I, I had a bit of a shock um, this weekend because it turns out, um, thanks to the lovely Dina from Timeless Junk Journals, thank you Dina, that my comments weren't all coming through. So it, <laughs> I had to call in um, my son um, and find out what the problem was. Um, and he did rectify it and I ended up with over 70 comments from all of you lovely ladies that I didn't even know existed. So if you have received a reply, because I did take three hours to reply to all of you um, last night, I am so sorry. I would always I would like to reply on my comments. Um, so you might have thought, gosh, it's taken Angela two months to reply to the comment. They were stuck in the spam folder. Thank you, YouTube. Um, so, yes, I think I'm up to date with all, all of those comments. Um, so keep them coming. I saw the most lovely comments again going through and I felt so bad when I realized that you had made a comment and I hadn't even received it. So I'm terribly sorry. Um, but now I've had that uh, rectified. I know what to look for. So long story. Um, but anyway, Thank you so much again, everybody. Your support is phenomenal. You are phenomenal. And what I would like to ask you is, um, look out for Wednesday morning's video. It's going to be a lovely surprise. Thank you all very much. I love to, um, this time with you. And I love um, looking at what you, you write and send to me. Carry on doing that. Um, and I'll see you Wednesday. Bye-bye.